SwiftUI gives us lots of gestures for working with views and does a great job of taking away most of the hard work so we can focus on the parts that matter. Easily the most common is our friend on tap gesture, but there are several others. And there are also interesting ways of combining gestures together that are worth trying out. I'm going to skip past a simple on tap gesture because we've covered it before so many times. But before we try bigger things, I do want to add that you can pass a count parameter to make them handle double taps, triple taps, and more, like this. On tap gesture, count two. Print, double tapped. Okay, let's look at something more interesting than simple taps. For handling long presses, you can use on long press gesture, like this. Dot on long press gesture, and then print long pressed. Like tap gestures, long press gestures are also customizable. For example, you can specify a minimum duration for the press, so your action closure only triggers after a specific number of seconds have passed. For example, this will trigger only after two seconds. Minimum duration, two. You can even add a second closure that triggers whenever the state of the gesture is changed. This will be given a single Boolean parameter as input and it will work like this. First, as soon as you press down, the change closure will be called with its parameter set to true. Second, if you release before the gesture has been recognized, so if you release after one second when using a two second recognizer, then the change closure will be called with its parameter set to false. And third, if you hold down for the full length of the recognizer, then the change closure will be called with its parameter set to false because the gesture is no longer in flight and your completion closure will be called too. Use code like this to try it out for yourself. I'll do minimum duration one and pressing in progress in, print in progress, in progress, and then our long press print. For more advanced gestures, you should use the gesture modifier with one of the gesture structs. Drag gesture, long press gesture, magnification gesture, rotation gesture, and tap gesture. These all have special modifiers, usually on-ended and often on-changed too. And you can use them to take action when the gestures are in flight for on-changed or completed for on-ended. As an example, we could attach a magnification gesture to a view so that pinching in and out scales a view up and down. This can be done by creating two at state properties to store the scale amount, using that inside a scale effect modifier, then setting those values in the gesture like this. At state, private var, current amount, CG float equals zero. At state, private var, final amount, CG float equals one. Then our hello world text, and dot scale effect, final amount plus current amount, dot gesture, and I'll use a magnification gesture. We'll do on changed, amount in, and do self.current amount equals amount minus one. Then in on ended, I'll do amount in and say self.final amount plus equals self.current amount and set current amount back to zero again. Now exactly the same approach can be taken for rotating views using rotation gesture, except now we're using the rotation effect modifier. So first I'll change current amount to be an angle of degree zero and the same for final amount. Next, I'll change scale effect for rotation effect. Then I'll change magnification gesture to be rotation gesture. And I'll change amount to be angle and remove the minus one. And then set current amount to degrees at zero. Where things start to get more interesting is when gestures clash. When you have two or more gestures, they might be recognized at the same time such as if you have one gesture attached to a view and the same gesture attached to its parent. For example, this attaches an on tap gesture to a text view and its parent. I'll clear up the body and say vstack text hello world, on tap gesture, print text tapped. And the vstack, I'll also say on tap gesture, print vstack tapped. In this situation, SwiftUI will always give the child's gesture priority, which means when we tap the text view, we'll see text tapped. However, if you want to change that, you can use the high priority gesture modifier to force a parent's gesture to trigger instead, like this. 
dot high priority gesture, tap gesture, on ended, underscore in, print vstack tapped. Alternatively, you can use the simultaneous gesture modifier to tell SwiftUI you want both the parent and child gestures to trigger at the same time. Dot simultaneous gesture. And when that's run, it'll print both text tapped and vstack tapped. Finally, SwiftUI lets us create gesture sequences where one gesture will only become active if another gesture is first succeeded. This takes a little more thinking because the gestures need to be able to reference each other, so you can't just attach them directly to a view. Here's an example that shows gesture sequencing, where you can drag a circle around, but only if you long press on it first. So first we'll say, at state private var offset equals CG size zero. This will be how far the circle's been dragged. Then we'll say, at state private var is dragging equals false whether it's currently being dragged or not. Then inside the body, we'll make a drag gesture that updates offset and is dragging as it moves around. I'll say, let drag gesture equals drag gesture, dot on changed, value in, self dot offset equals value dot translation, dot on ended, underscore in, with animation, self dot offset equals zero, and make is dragging false. Then we'll make a long press gesture that enables is dragging. We'll say, let press gesture equals long press gesture dot on ended value in with animation self dot is dragging equals true. And now we'll put those two together. We'll make a combined gesture that forces the user to long press then drag. We'll say, let combined equals press gesture dot sequenced before drag gesture. And now we'll make a 64 by 64 circle that scales up when it's dragged. Sets its offset to whatever we had back from the drag gesture and uses our combined gesture. So we'll do return circle, dot fill, color red, dot frame, width 64, height 64, dot scale effect, if is dragging is true, 1.5, otherwise one. Dot offset, offset, and dot gesture combined. Gestures are a really great way to make fluid, interesting user interfaces, but make sure you show users how they work, otherwise they can just be confusing.